Hello geeks and gamers, Rendek here, and I would love to share with you some of the finer details regarding ability scores, how they relate to skills, and how to generate ability scores in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. In today's video, we will be taking an in-depth look at what each of the ability scores represents and how they inform the skills and the various different methods that are used to generate ability scores for each and every one of the character sheets that you will be using. But before we get into any of that, allow me a moment to share with you how you can show us your support. Please consider supporting us on our mission to bring guilt-free gaming to the tabletop community by liking the video, subscribing to our channel, and possibly even becoming a channel member for access to exclusive videos, Geeks and Gamers tabletop emojis, and more. If you found this video to be particularly helpful, please consider leaving us a tip using the Super Thanks feature located next to the like button at the bottom of this video. So without any further delay, let's take a look at ability scores and the skills that they govern. Each of the abilities in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition is representative of an intrinsic skill, or an intrinsic value, I should say, that makes up a person. According to the Player's Handbook, the ability scores associated with each and every person is not just a measure of intrinsic capability, but it also encompasses a creature's training and their competence with the activities related to that ability. Starting off with strength, this ability is a measure of bodily power, athletic training, and the extent to which you can exert raw physical force. According to the player's handbook, the types of d20 strength checks that you can anticipate making involve pushing, pulling, lifting, or breaking an object, typically. Strength also governs the skill of athletics, and it determines a character's melee weapon, attack bonuses, and damage bonuses, a carrying capacity for, cre uh, for creatures, and their ability to push, pull, drag, lift an object. As for athletics, this skill has to do with your character's ability to climb, jump, or swim in difficult situations or conditions. It is also used in the contest of grappling. Dexterity represents the ability to be nimble, stealthy, or speedy. Dexterity governs the acrobatics, sleight of hand, and stealth skills, and it provides a bonus or penalty to initiative rolls. You can expect D20 dexterity checks in your campaign to be representative of your character's ability to get out of the way of a moving object, to maintain their balance, to pick a lock, or squeeze their way out of bonds, any kind of situation that would require your character to be out of sight and out of mind requires the use of a dexterity check. Dexterity also governs ranged and finesse weapon attack and damage rolls. In addition to all of these things, dexterity influences your character's armor class depending on the type of armor that they are using. Descriptions of each armor type will tell you to what degree this is so. The acrobatic skill covers your ability character's ability to stay on their feet and to perform feats of agility. Sleight of hand skill prim prim primarily covers your ability to accomplish tasks without being noticed. Pickpocketing, card tricks, and planting evidence would all fall underneath this skill. Stealth is a fairly obvious skill in its presentation. It represents your character's ability to remain concealed from others. Next, constitution is a measure of your character's vitality and health. The higher the constitution score, the more hit points a creature has. Constitution does not cover any particular skills, but it does play a role in concentration checks made by magic users that might be attempting to maintain a spell while suffering from attacks. You might encounter constitution checks when your character is attempting to maintain a forced march for a long period of time, when they're holding their breath for a prolonged period of time, or when they are attempting to survive without food or water. Constitution saving throws are also required when you are trying to resist the effects of exhaustion. Coming up on intelligence, this ability measures the robustness of a character's mental faculties, their memory, and even in some cases their ability to be reasonable. Intelligence governs the skills of arcana, history, investigation, nature, and religion. You might encounter intelligence checks when your character needs to recall a piece of information, or reason their way through solving a problem. You might encounter an intelligence check when you need to make an estimation of an item, forge something, or win a game of skill, to name a few examples from the player's handbook alone. 
Intelligence also acts as a spellcasting ability for wizards, artificers, arcane tricksters, and eldritch knights. The governed skills of intelligence are mostly knowledge-related skills. The arcana skill is a measure of your ability to remember lore, spells, how magic items work, and details about other planes of existence. Similarly, the history skill is a measure of your ability to recall historical events. Investigation is your character's capacity to make logical conclusions based on the information that they encounter, and like arcana and history, nature is a measure of your character's ability to remember information about plants, animals, and things like the weather. Finally, the last of the knowledge skills, religion, is a measurement of your ability to remember information about deities, ordinances, and other things related to religious practice. Wisdom is the embodiment of how observant you are to the world around you. Many wisdom checks relate to how well or how able your character is at understanding the people around them or their surroundings. Wisdom governs the skills of animal handling, insight, medicine, perception, and survival. Wisdom is all about knowing what to do and when, so many of the types of checks you will encounter relating to wisdom will be about understanding the nature of things, like how people feel and why they might feel the way that they do. Wisdom is also about the spellcasting ability for clerics, druids, and rangers. The animal handling skill, governed by the wisdom ability, is an expression of your character's ability to interact with and understand the animals that they encounter. Insight largely has to do with your character's ability to determine the intentions of the people or creatures that they encounter, and medicine is a generally used for either determining the cause of an illness or stabilizing an unconscious creature. Perception is your character's ability to use their senses and no to notice things around them. This ranges from being able to hear an animal in the dark to being able to taste a poison in a wine. The last of the wisdom skills, survival, largely has to do with your character's ability to interact with the world around you. If you are trying to follow an animal, predict the weather, or find edible plants, survival is the skill that you would likely use. Lastly, but most certainly not least, charisma. It is a force of personality. Confidence, eloquence, charm, presentation, these are all reflections of a character's charisma. Charisma governs the skills of deception, intimidation, performance, and persuasion. Typically, charisma checks are needed when engaging in social activities. Sometimes you might encounter a group of individuals that are happy to be entertained on your adventures, and in these kinds of instances, charisma is key. You might be trying to wiggle more information out of another character who isn't as forthcoming as you would like them to be. In addition to all of this, Charisma is the spellcasting ability for bards, paladins, sorcerers, and warlocks. Sometimes the best solution is talking your way out of a bad situation, and that is the embodiment of Charisma. Deception is all about your character's ability to direct others away from the truth, whether that be through misdirection or lies. The Intimidation skill utilizes your character's Charisma to influence others through hostility. The Performance skill that utilizes your character's charisma and talents to enrapture and enthrall an audience. Finally, the persuasion skill governed by charisma is a measurement of your character's ability to utilize their charm to convince others to do what they want them to. Now that about covers all of the abilities and skills that they govern. Since each of these abilities, aside from constitution, governs one or more of your character skills, you get to add bonuses or penalties to each of your skills. Mathematically, the process is really simple. Whenever you have an ability score between 1 and 30, you will receive an ability score bonus or penalty between negative 5 and plus 10. Take this bonus or penalty and apply it to each of the skills that is governed by the ability in question. If you have an ability score that is 10 or 11, you will have neither a bonus nor a penalty related to that skill. If you bump that number to a 12 or a 13, you will have a bonus of plus 1. If you follow this trend up to 14 or 15, you will have a bonus of plus 2, etc. This trend also continues in the opposite direction. So take a quick look at this chart from the player's handbook for a complete breakdown. 
Again, each bonus is applied to each skill that is governed by the ability in question. So if your strength score is 17, your athletics skill will automatically get a plus 3 bonus. Apply this principle to every other ability and the skills that they govern, and you will be very close to having your skills completely sorted. Now let's talk about generating ability scores. The player's handbook describes two primary methods for determining ability scores, and the first is purely random. Take 46 and roll them all at once. Select the three highest dice values from each roll and then add them together. Repeat this process five additional times, once for each ability. When you have six totals, allocate them to your character's abilities in whatever way you see fit. Some strategy is required for the best kinds of character builds, but the choice is ultimately up to you. The second method for generating ability scores is referred to as taking the standard array. This array consists of six numbers, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. Just like the method above, allocate the six numbers to your abilities in whatever way you see fit. The last method for generating ability scores requires the use of the point buy system. Take a quick look at this table for reference because it can become a little confusing. Using this method, the minimum value of any skill you can have as a character is 8. The highest value of any skill, however, is 15. If you choose to use this method, you start with 27 points and apply them to whatever scores you would like following the table until you run out of points. On the higher end of things, you could wind up having a character that has the ability score spread of 15, 15, 15, and 8, 8, 8. It should, however, be noted that this last method for generating ability scores is considered a variant method, and you need to consult your DM whether or not concerning whether or not you can use it. And that's a wrap. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment on what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to join our gilded server to chat with me, the Geeks and Gamers Tabletop crew, or our growing fellowship. You can even find a table to play at, and it is all free. Just click the link in the video description below. May all your games be guilt-free and fun, and we will talk with you later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>